things you stay on. No, I need to date for them. And so each one of you decided that you wanted to have your children in a, an immersion program, and this is the only one I believe in Beijing where we focus on 50% English and 50% Chinese. So you elected to have your children here. I want you to know that they're safe. We're looking at them very carefully and planning a program that should keep them fairly comfortable while they move through what I think could be a fairly stressful situation if we don't do that. So at any rate, it is an, a, an adult agenda, but we know that there are lots of benefits for kids that are going through a program much like this. And um, it's interesting that just in the last two days, I, I have a service from uh, Association for Curriculum and Supervision uh, Development in the U.S. and programs, immersion programs that are beginning in the U.S. And this article that came out, we will be posting on our website, will we not? Um, and it indicates that kids move very slowly through those first several years of language immersion. And they might be even behind their counterparts in terms of a particular language. But then, um, as they move toward middle school, those kids actually have benefited by being in such a program. And it was interesting because this morning I get to the office and I look into that server. And here's another program in Idaho in the U.S. Um, where they're indicating that they're, the kids are even... Uh, the kids uh, are performing even better than their English-only counterparts by being in such a program. But again, what happens is it's a very slow process up through grade three. And then the kids really begin to take off. And I'll show you some of those benefits. But we'll post bo both of these on our website so that you can take a look at that. Here are some of the benefits that your children we know from past research that kids are going to gain by being in a program much like this, or we wouldn't do it. There wouldn't be any good reason to do it. First of all, cognition and uh, cognitive flexibility are expanded. These kids, um, and in this article from Idaho this morning, superintendent said, well, you know, we don't really know why kids perform better than their, you know, monolingual peers. But they do, and we suspect it's because their minds are stretched. Their minds are stretched. And I know that in, in looking at the children as they're working in the classrooms and playing with others, their minds are stretched. They have to be in order for them to be uh, communicating with teachers and peers. So their flexibility is also expanded. Another thing, another benefit uh, for your children is that learning languages later on are going to be, it's just going to be easier because they're really focusing on the construction, the syntax, how languages are different and so on, and they're going to be able to make those comparisons with new languages later on. This is, this is our mission, that when your kids grow up, they're going to be able to do very well what you're doing right now. Many of you are not in your home country. And what we want, our mission here at 3E, is that children will be able, when they're adults and even now, to be able to move fluidly between cultures. That's one thing that we're after. And we believe they're going to be able to do that. Another benefit is this, is that the language uh, certainty of the, of the brain is more flexible and plastic in childhood. So age goes two different ways. One, um, you're better able to learn a language when you're older. And, you know, people, people, there's a myth there connected to that. Simply because you've got something to compare it to. Once you have established a primary language, and you know how that language works, it's easier to learn another language subsequently. However, the, the older you are, the more you're going to have trouble with phonology. And these children who are learning these languages right now are not, they're less likely to have an accent, so to speak, when they grow up. So good reasons for them to be uh, learning these languages right now. And the last thing is that children who, for instance, attend schools where the 
um, upshot is 70, 30, 20, 80. You, you see those schools in Beijing. Uh, children will perhaps learn to, to communicate in another language, such, such as Chinese, but they will not learn to read or write in Chinese. They just can't. There's not enough time allocated in the program. Maybe you would have them in a program after school. But I think, you know, uh, I have to say this. Um, this is probably a good place to say it. If children have spent six hours a day in school, that's a lot of work. And after school, I really believe that kids can benefit by getting outside, riding their bike, by, by having the pressure off. I, you know, I think that probably attending um, other language schools, um, I would hope that, that you, if you're enrolling them in something like that, that it's uh, kept uh, uh, on a fun basis and that there's not a lot of pressure because you, I, I think that you have to take a good look at the overall day of each child that's in school and take a look at, so what is it like from getting out of bed in the morning until they go to bed at night? What kinds of pressures are they, are they experiencing? We know that human beings can um, learn better if, in fact, uh, they have low to moderate stress. But once stress gets too high, learning really shuts down. And so you want to really take a close look at, again, the pressure that kids are experiencing from the time they get out of bed in the morning until the time they go to bed at night. And I really think for little human beings, there's a lot of benefit to being able to play think about things they want to think about, hear stories that they want to hear, just interact with other children and with you in a non-pressured <coughs> non situation.